by popular demand. Right? A short visit here for you. We're running the chops out here. Ladies and gentlemen, if we could have your attention for just one second, we, 
I know everybody's waiting anxiously for this wonderful show we have for you tonight. Uh, on behalf of St. Sava Church and Milan Opisic, uh, the reason for the little opening information speech here is to inform you that everybody already knows what we're here tonight for, for Milan's last performance. But uh, earlier in the day, we took a vote, and uh, five to one, they said, you can't retire, Milan. So your boy said you can't retire. No, just Hey, Vinko, we just fired him. Oh, There's he just no fired choice. him. Well, earlier, the rumor was he got a better offer tonight. He couldn't be here, so that was the first thing. Anyway, enough of that. So further ado, I think we should get on with the show. Let's give it up one more time, folks, for Milan Opisic. Final night here at St. Salva, 2006. God bless you, Milan. Let's go, guys.
život cigacki Sance obcara Opes mata što pevam ja Bože na smet i plać gitara Prolazi mladost moja i sve mu će biti rad Ja se opračim ja Cigarim sa vama U novi živ od sada idem ja Takav je uđeš od sudnje nama Koj Bogu cigla sa zadnji moje čas Takav je uđeš od sudnje nama Koj Bogu cigla sa zadnji moje čas Cigansku čergu sad ja ostavljam, jer dosta je užit kad to. Ostavljam vama svoju gitaru, a ja ostavljam najboljega prijatelja svoj. Ja se opraštam, Cigani za vama, u novi živ, od sada idem ja. Takav je uđeš, to sud je nama, od Bogu cigla se zađi mu je čas. Takav je uđeš, to sud je nama, od Bogu cigla se zađi mu je Čepu slavino, dožno, žustanino, 
travieso se vio. Admiruyes no se viene, y yo pisito te escuché. to play this next number for Marco Turbovic and for a dear friend of mine over there selling tickets and it's called Bela Ruja, the White Rose. Sam tu da prošao, razbolje me kad ispazim, ne prolazim tu da više, da sve daju, da ne pitam, samo sanjam, ja od nje imam, i bolje da i pozno mi. Tužno zvona zvone, udaje se, draga moja. O, 
things here that are on the wall are some of the awards that I've gotten the last couple years. I suppose the large one is the uh, most important one that was when I got the National Heritage Award. I shared the podium with the governor of the state of Indiana and uh, got a picture of him over here and uh, he spoke first after he got through, then I got up and gave my little blurb. Then I looked down at him and I says, Governor Mitch, you are not the only Mitch in the house today. I says, I've been Uncle Mitch to my nieces and nephews for 50 years. Well, after the affair was over with, he sought me out and he says, well, he says, how did you get the name Mitch? I says, well, my folks were immigrants and they, they thought that it might be helpful with, with the Anglo kids that I played with that they know me as Mitch. Well, he says, much the same thing happened to me. He says, you know, he says, I'm Syrian. I was flabbergasted. 
But uh, that's how he got tagged with the name Mitch. So now everyone calls him my man, Mitch. <laughs> Very nice man. And uh, some of the pictures here are our Congressman Peter Vesklowski, who gave uh, my wife and I uh, a real treat, took us through uh, Capitol building there. It was very nice. Of course, with this award, I got a letter from the president, Bush. It was a very exciting, very exciting trip for us. Uh, they brought my orchestra into play. And uh, they had a lovely dinner at the Library of Congress. And uh, my wife said, you know, you may have to speak. And I says, no, they're not going to call me up to speak. Well, lo and behold, they start calling all the recipients of the award up. And uh, so I had to think real fast. And when they called me up to the podium, I grabbed this very large napkin that I had. And I walked to the podium. And I think my wife thought that I had lost it. But when I reached the microphone, I shook it up in the air. And I said, you may have noticed I brought my crying towel with me because I've been known to get very emotional and start weeping. And I got a few little laughs, you know. So I was able to thank my folks for coming to this country. And uh, I wanted to get that off my chest. And then my, my late brother, who taught me skills when I was uh, right out of high school. And of course, I gave him that line about my wife. I said, she took a lump of coal and made a diamond out of it. So I, I'm starting to get at loss for words up there. And uh, it was a real attentive crowd. And, uh, and I said, I would be remiss if I didn't mention my orchestra. I says, my orchestra is made up of three Serbian. We have three of us have Serbian fathers, and three of them have Croatian fathers. And I said, look, we get along real well. I said, and this is what America's all about. And I, I got a real big ovation on that. And I felt good when I went. But by the time I got back to my table to finish eating, I was soaking wet, and uh, the, the tears were flowing, too, because I, I get very emotional. I hope it doesn't happen tonight. Uh, I do other things in my shop. I, make, I, I get bored sometimes with making real instruments, so I make music boxes in the shape of instruments. I even make clocks. The only thing I'm not good at anymore is uh, doing repair work around the house. <laughs> and in this picture here, we have the first Tamburitsa Orchestra from St. Sava Church. And this was back in 1936. There are only two members in these pictures still alive, and they're here today. One is Milan Bundelo, and the other one is George Tatalovich. And they, they were active during 1936, and they had a fine orchestra. And then it was sort of all lost till the 60s, and uh, I got our kids group started. I brought these from my collection because they're vintage collector item in, uh, instruments. This one came from the old country. This one here was made by a maker in Chicago, and this instrument was on display at the World's Fair in uh, Chicago, 1933-34. And this family of instruments is no longer used. You were only able to do so much with this kind of an instrument. The large one in the corner is a bass, and it's the smallest of basses, and was probably made for a children's group. Uh, this one here was made in Chicago by the uh, gentleman that I bought out when he retired, and this instrument is very unique with all the pearl and abalone inlays. It was in the World's Fair of 33, 34, and it has some wonderful wood in the back and sides. And uh, like I say, these instruments, uh, they are obsolete because they were a part of a system called the uh, Farkash system. And it was mainly devised for children to make it easy for them to learn how to play. And as a 18-year-old, uh, I ventured into Chicago with my dad, and I bought a Prima from him. And it, this was in the 40s, and my dad wanted to see where all this money was going, you know. I had just started working. And uh, the instrument maker was a touchy fellow. He didn't like any uh, criticism of his work. 
<laughs> my dad chided him about not using countersink screws. And he turned tail and went into the back of the shop, and he wouldn't come out for a half hour, and I begged my dad. I says, Tata, don't make this man angry. He won't sell me this instrument. Well, he came back out, and I, I got it, and uh, my daughter played it with the junior group, and uh, I still have it hanging in my archives at home. The little one is called a Bisernitsa, and that has been replaced by what we call the Prima. And the other one next to it on the left is a Farkash Brach. And we have made that into a larger instrument so we could have more of a push on sound. And it, it's about this size now. So I'd like to think that we, we have take, taken the tumble a step up, you know. And I'm sure that somewhere down the line, someone that's making instruments will even improve on what we have. And of course, you know, I had to include the guslas because for we Serbians, that is a very uh, historic instrument and it kept our history. And uh, the instrument maker that I bought out from Chicago gave me this one here. It came from Belgrade about 1918. It's a real collector's item. And these are exceptional too. And recently I befriended a young man from Bellwood and he started building guslas. Not only building them, he also plays them and, and sings the, uh, the dirges. But his story is so classic that I just love to tell it. He joined the Marines. And while that first week when they were pairing off all the recruits, They'd had all the Catholics in one line, all the Presbyterians in another line, all the Lutherans in another line. So Juro Ivancevic found himself standing all alone. And the sergeant said to him, hey boy, he says, what are you, an atheist? And he says, no sir, I'm Serbian Orthodox. So he showed him his dog tag, you know. So the sergeant says, well listen, we don't have anything here for Orthodox. You're gonna have to join one of these other churches. And he says, until you do that, you will be thrashing. Thrashing is a uh, marine term for doing push-ups and running laps. So after about three weeks, Judo got pretty tired of that. So he decided he was going to join a church. So he confronted the sergeant. And he says, I'm ready to join one of these other churches. And the sergeant says, well, what church are you going to join? He says, I want to join those black Baptists. And he says, he says, what is the matter with you? He says, well, look, Sergeant, he says, I've checked into all these other religions, and the only ones I have anything in common with are the Black Baptists. They were slaves for 200 years, and my people were slaves for 500 years. During the growing up period, and Gary, we would, uh, shame on us, we used to uh, make fun of the Gusla players, you know. But they, had they told us the complete history of what this instrument did for Serbs, and we had a better knowledge, I don't think we would have laughed, you know, because it's very historic. I, I do not play Gusla, but I'll, I'll try to draw the bow, give you an idea. But the main thing about the instrument, the fellow that's playing it, he has to know these stories and chants. And uh, we had a fellow in here yesterday, I'd like to trap him and get him on tape because he was very good and he, he told about Serbian history while playing it. And this is the one that was made by this young Judo Ivancevic. And he's getting very good. As you can see, the, the carving on the head is uh, very exceptional. Actually, in high school, I was playing country western music. And then I made the transition into tamburica music with returning World War II veterans. And uh, there was a young fellow, well, he was young then, Steve Barrich, I don't know if you'd remember him, but he had this wonderful turtleback pri prima, you know, and I fell in love with it. The group didn't last too long, so I started my own group and the first year that my wife and I got married, my brother and I went into Michigan City and we captured a turtle. 
and my brother was a hunter and anything that he killed he felt that it had to be on the table for food so my wife didn't want to cook it my sister-in-law didn't want to cook it so my mom to keep peace in the family she says I'll cook it and uh, we hate the turtle I didn't care for it I think what happened was I I lifted the the lid on the donuts on the big pot and I looked in there and there's the legs still moving after about three hours of cooking and that just shot me down for eating it but then but nevertheless I, I made the instrument out of it out of that turtle shell that was my first that, that prompted me to, to go on number two then I started to do repairs for uh, musicians that I knew you know and uh, from there, it just blossomed up. Now, the count is, I think the last count I had, I have made over 1,500 instruments. Plus the repairs, I don't know how many repairs I've done through the years. It's really been a joy to me. I mean, I worked as a tool and die maker after high school, but I never got to see the end result of what I did. With, with instruments, you finish them, then you put the strings on, and if they sound great, you are really gratified and very happy they sound bad, you're not too happy, but you're willing to try again. This is the uh, Tamburitsa group that I got started back in the 60s, and it, it took a little doing. My wife was teaching Sunday school at the time, and I asked her to try to recruit children that had some musical training, because we'd be one step up on it. And so she got me, I think, about 15 kids. The next step was to uh, to get the parents to sign them up and collect some money to buy the instruments because I couldn't make 15 instruments overnight. So we got them from the old country. We used to practice at the YWCA in Gary. We threw our first concert and it was a success. We packed the place because, you know, all the grandmas and the uncles and aunts and they all showed up. And the, uh, the kids became in demand every year organization wanted to hire them or have them play and I said well wait a while I'm the director so we can do the job for you but you will have to pay these children because they paid for the instruments they paid for the music and they're paying a teacher I think we went up to about 1970 1976 and then it disbanded I had my daughter in the group and uh, she took to it pretty easy because she was a piano major and uh, you know working with two hands and then going to one hand is very simple you know she would get bored at times but my wife would get on her case and say look your dad started this group you better stick with it so she did till graduation <laughs> and some of these are families there's uh, the Berovich family Cernovich family Nikovich family, they all turned out very good. These uh, costumes were made for the, uh, the children. I think this one belonged to my daughter. And the boys had uh, bolero type shirts like, uh, you know, the full puff sleeves and the embroidered vests. And it was a sharp looking outfit. And we, we did a little traveling. We played for the Russians in Chicago and they were ecstatic about the performance. Then we took them to uh, St. Louis, and on because of the group, St. Louis started their own Tamboritsa group. And the same thing happened in Indianapolis. This was Paul Jan Carrick's pet project. He's in Cutter, George. God bless him, he started putting all these old pictures together from years gone by, and they're housed in the church on the way upstairs to the loft where they perform. And he's done a, done a magnificent job. And uh, at one time, St. Sava had a Serbian ladies singing society, and they had an all-male singing society, and then they merged them. This is one of the costumes that uh, the male members of the uh, choir wear. Kata George has a long history, and of course, Carl Malden was in the group as a youngster, and his father was instrumental in uh, starting singing societies, Serbian singing societies through America. And, and Mr. Rapajic, he was instrumental in starting the Kata George group.
The folklore group of St. Sava was another a added addition to our historic presence, you know, and the, uh, the youngsters dance, the, they dan do the dances very good. And I think through the years they've had different instructors, but uh, they've had the correct instruction and they, they do justice to our dances. This was another pet project of mine because uh, I've been a Carl Malden fan since I was in grade school. Uh, one of the teachers brought a film that he appeared in as a Trojan guard in his very first movie. And from that point on, I was hooked by Carl Malden. And the teachers always raved about him. So some of these stories are about Carl and how he got to where he is. And of course, we have a book written by his daughter. Very wonderful book. He tells stories about some of the teachers in the Gary school system. And uh, some of them I really have to laugh heartily because I had some of the same teachers. I would recommend the book to anyone that's interested in uh, acting or the hard road that it is to get success. About four or five years ago, he came back to Valparaiso and got an honorary degree from Valpo Uni University. So we partied after it. I love this picture. This is with a, a deceased member of my orchestra talking to Carl. His family was just in here a little while ago and they're just very emotional about it, but they were awed by the whole thing. And I says, very good. Carl Molden has been a great benefactor to St. Sava Church with his donations, you know. And I really don't think that we gave him enough credit for what he did. Uh, and if we're going to do anything for him, we better do it soon because he's 94 years old. And, you know, you get into your 90s, time is slipping away. But I never, uh, never, man, I never met a man that was so humble and an Academy Award winner. And his father was not too uh, pleased with him changing the name. But Carl made up for that because every movie that he appeared in, he would mention the Sokulovich name. And the one that drew a laugh for me was he was playing in Birdman of Alcatraz. And he's walking into this section where the jail cells, uh, jail cells are. And he says hello to this prisoner, and he says, hello, Sakulovich. Well, his father chided him about that. He says, there has never been a Sakulovich in jail. From the time I was a uh, youngster growing up, my mom was always talking about Nikola Tesla because he was born in the next village from where she was from. And so I grew up with that Tesla thing pounded into my head. <clears throat> and later on in life, I when I started doing a lot of reading, I realized what a gem we had in Tesla. Everything electronic that we have, most of it we owe to Nikola Tesla. Alternating current, which made uh, what Edison did, made it look second rate. Uh, neon lights. And of course, uh, about 25 years ago, they gave Tesla the credit for the radio. They took it away from Marconi because every component part in the radio was invented by Nikola Tesla. So it was only fair to give him the credit for the radio. Tesla stories abound. And uh, you talk to a lot of people, they say, well, he was kind of strange, you know. He'd go to a restaurant and wipe off all the utensils before he ate. Well, listen, I go to restaurants today and I would like to do that. You know, if it wasn't so conspicuous, I look at some of the silverware and I says, I'd like to pull a Tesla off here, you know. I think one of the greatest honors that he's going to get about his life is next year, the new Tesla Roadster is going to be on the market. And it's, it's the work of six electrical geniuses in America who want to make this electric car and honor it with Tesla's name. So I kidded my wife, I says, would you like to buy me one? She says, for 100000 I don't think so. So I'll be able to look at it, though. There's a controversy about who Tesla is. Sometimes I, I play one against the other in my shop. I'd have this picture hanging up at my shop, and when some Croatian fellows would come in, and they'd say, oh, Tesla, he's Croatian. I said, well, how could that be? His father was a Serbian Orthodox priest. 
and they, they leave, they're not too happy with me. Then I'll have some Serbians come in, and they'll say, oh, Tesla, he's Serbian. I says, but he was born in Croatia. You're born in Chicago, you're a Chicagoan. So technically, he's a Croatian. <laughs> My fellow Serbs would leave angry, and very angry at me, but to Tesla's credit, in one article that I read, he said, I'm very proud of my Serbian heritage, and I'm also proud of where I was born, and I give them credit too. He was a very learned man. He, he socialized with some very renowned people, Sarah Bernhardt, the actress, Mark Twain, the writer. Mark Twain and he were uptight, and uh, he was just an exceptional man, and uh, one of my Anglo friends died, and after he died, his, their family brought me this miniature Tesla coil that he made when he was in uh, high school. And when the thing is working properly, you can hold this neon bulb in your hand and trip the lever, and it lights up in your hand. And of course, now there are many books written about Tesla and his genius. And I've got one book here that houses all his patents, and they number into the hundreds. Here's a man that did so much for this country and for the world. He harnessed Niagara Falls and lit up the area. The first World's Fair, he lit it up. And uh, that was in Chicago, the first world. Not 33, but before that. And uh, I can't say enough about him. He is one of my heroes. In this corner here, we have some very historical pictures. The top one is from the assassination of King Alexander. His assassination had a big impact on the whole world. In fact, a lot of folks seem to believe that World War was followed up because of this. He was a great king. He, un he united the whole country, but you can't please everyone. And someone did this dastardly deed and assassinated him in France. The picture below it was taken in 1914, and these were Serbs that went back to fight for Serbia in the First World War. And most of these are brothers here, and they're the Vyagic brothers from Gary, with a couple cousins sprinkled in. A couple of them perished in, the, in that fight, but uh, they're written up in the annals of, of Serbian history as real heroes. Uh, this lower picture here, we're kind of hoping that somebody might come through this little mini-museum and then be able to identify this young man on the steps of the first St. Saba Church on 20th and Washington. Hopefully that'll happen. We did manage to identify the bride in this picture in front of the very first church, and her maiden name was Vorkapic. And this was a Zorich girl, and this gal did a, she did a lot of singing at our church function. She had a wonderful voice. <clears throat> the corner picture is Americans that went to fight in World War I and World War II. And during that period when we had the church on 13th and Connecticut, we had this wonderful monument with all their names on it. The monument still stands, but we've been a little negligent and recreating this at the new church and giving this giving these gentlemen their place of honor in American history and there's not too many of them left and I think it should be done soon and of course in the corner here this is every Serbs hero of World War II General Draža Mihailović who unfortunately the Allies did not back and it's still a very sore subject among many of us. I could go hours and hours in that dissertation, but I won't. The only thing is, it's a blot on history that they let this man be assassinated. This plaque is the work of Ted Ersig, who wrote, wrote a, a wonderful book about the uh, gentleman that went back to fight for Serbia in World War I. And he has all their names recreated here on this plaque of honor. And I have to hand it to Ted. And the book that he wrote is a wonderful book, and above it is the first Serbian church in Gary, 
and I remember it slightly growing up, and I uh, recall going there for a funeral. It was not uncommon in those days because not everyone had automobiles, and uh, even the undertakers sometimes didn't have hearses. So what they did from 20th and Connecticut, the pallbearers would carry the casket to 20th and Broadway where a streetcar would come by and they named that streetcar the streetcar hearse. They would place the casket on and all the uh, family and friends paying their uh, homage to the deceased would get on this car and would go down Broadway to 45th Avenue, make a right turn and go to Oak Hill Cemetery. These pictures here are all about those gentlemen that went back to fight for Serbia. And they, they were already established American citizens and uh, it must have taken a lot of intestinal fortitude to leave this country and go over there and fight for the freedom of their old country. So I take my hats off to them. Here's a cover of the book that Tit wrote with Pious Gravity. It's a wonderful book. For youngsters that would like to learn something of the, about that period, I would recommend reading that book. Here is another picture of people from our church in front of the old church and even some children. It was just a wonderful period. We feature here some of our athletes, like the late Joe Seaver, who was a Hall of Famer in the small league of football players. Nick Strincevich, one of our baseball players. That would take another room because we've had some great athletes among the Serbians. A few years back, uh, Serb World Magazine wanted to do a story on the Serbs of Gary, Indiana. And unbeknown to many people, at one time, there were 20,000 Serbians in Gary, Indiana, and they built, helped build that city and the steel mills. And uh, all at the uh, Gary Library on Fifth Avenue there, they have a room called the Gary Room. Lo and behold, I'm going through some of those books, and I was just like a kid in a candy store. I'm looking through some of the books, and I find a record of all the priests that Gary ever had, and a record of all the Gary church presidents. And I look, and I see a, a fellow named Bozo Turbovich. So I jotted that down. When I got home, I called up the late Bob Turbovich, and I says, Bob, was your, was your father ever a church president? And it, it was not a good subject with him because he was a, a little bitter about it. He says, yes, he says, my father was the first church president. Now I found other books since then that verify that statement. And then I found out that Bozo Turbovich was a fireman in my fire station 40 years before I got there. Now this got to be a personal thing with me. And I was bound and determined to have this man recognized as our first church president. So now he's framed in the offices over there in his fireman's uniform as the first church president. His wife was an, a remarkable woman. She headed the Red Cross here in Northwest Indiana during World War I. And she was very instrumental with starting the Serbobrad, the Serbian newspaper. And uh, that's a picture, picture of their marriage. I recognize them for, for what they did. It was, it was a marvelous achievement. Uh, the two pictures here that you're looking at on the wall is my favorite subject of all the subjects I love them all dearly, but this one is very uh, close to my heart. This wonderful building was built in the 30s. It was called the Miramar Ballroom. It was the first Serbian hall in Gary, built by early, early immigrants. And its main uh, job was to educate the early immigrants on how to get their citizenship papers and to learn a little English. And of course, we had all our cultural affairs in this building. I was so chagrined when they tore this building down because my dad was an investor in the building and when the depression hit, the Serbs lost the building. And then through uh, the different 
years that went by, the black folks of Gary began to rent the building and throw their affairs in that wonderful building. It was years ahead of its time. And it was much like the Aragon Trianon ballrooms in Chicago, which are still in operation. When I was on the fire department, I learned that through the years, every name black orchestra and singer that the, you can name performed in that building. And then when the city changed and the new mayor came in, he tore the building down, never realizing that he was not only tearing down Serbian history, but he was turning down tearing down black history. And so when they tore the building down, I had got some of the artifacts and they're in my wife's flower garden in the backyard as a constant reminder of those wonderful people that put this hall up. And we have some programs there of some of the uh, things that happened at the hall there. Great personalities that performed there. Here's a lovely picture here of the colo as it is in its present day form. And the picture below is our oldest living member which is Ann Palmachina, who was in there into her 90s. And I had her come over to the house and I taped her, and she gave me a lot of insight on old Gary. And I, I'm, I could be wrong, but I think she told me that she was the first female Serbian child born in Gary. Looking at this picture here, it's in the front of the first church on 20th and Connecticut gentlemen that are in a club called Lika. We had many different uh, Serbs come from different parts of the country. And these happened to be Lichans. It seems to me there was a lot of them. And then uh, early Kolo pictures, uh, one of the early priests, Father Stijicic with the Sunday school children. I wish we had that many now in Sunday school. This is a much later picture taken at the uh, 13th and Connecticut church. And there's people in here like the Vitkovich family, the Churchias, and they're all of my age the bracket, so I would know these folks. Same time I got the uh, artifacts, I also got some bricks from the building. And I was born about four houses down from the hall. They tore down the house I was born into, and I was Johnny on the spot, and I got bricks from the house I was born in. And we had just put this new fireplace in our house and the four bricks are embedded into the structure and they stick out a little and they're reminders of the house I was born in. This picture here is of a Father Benkarevich who we were all endeared to. He was a wonderful man. And when he was beaten and robbed in 1968, there were a lot of folks depressed at St. Sava Church. And we didn't know whether he was gonna make it or not because he, he had at least two or three dozen skull fractures. How he survived that, I'll never know. This picture here is, of course, is the Maid of Kosovo. After the Battle of Kosovo, this young lady went out and she found some of the survivors and gave them food and water. It's a very classic pictures, picture among Serbians. And I, I'm really crazy about this picture. It's, it's our old church on 13th and Connecticut Street. And it was a beautiful church. Uh, in my memory, uh, my wife and I were married in this church. My daughter was baptized in the church. And uh, I, uh, I, I just felt so terrible when it burned down. But things do happen. This was a... Uh, satellite church of St. Sava that we had in in Glen Park because there were so many Serbians living in Glen Park that uh, we had Sunday school there and, and this building still stands on 39th and Washington. And this is a later photo of the first church as it appears now. They've added on a wing here, and they've added on a whole wing here. So the structure of the church has been severely changed, and the roof pitch is almost flat where we had a pitched roof. And uh, in the basement there, they had, uh, it was not very large, but they had social doings there. 
These photos here that I'm looking at are photos of St. Saba during the fire in 1978. I never quite got over that either. I was working as a fireman at the main station on Fifth Avenue. The night that it burned, I wasn't working. When I got back to work two days later, the smart captain that I had accused me of burning my own church down. And I got very hostile with him and I says, don't, don't say it again. Some of the fellows I worked with were very kind and they brought me back some artifacts, which I'll show you later on when we go around again. And I was tickled about that. Of course, here are pictures of Father John, who has probably been the longest priest here at St. Salva. This picture was taken on a boat in Chicago when my daughter got her doctorate. Here's George Payevich and Ted Ersig, along with Father John. And this was the, uh, I should call it the uh, christening for the new St. Sava on 91st in uh, Mississippi. And the, one of the church booklets that we have here for anyone that's interested. My wife picked this up somewhere and I love it because it tells about all the different uh, churches and how long they've been in existence. And I love this one. It, it tells about our Orthodox Church and how long it's been in existence. And, and it says, if you are an Orthodox, your religion was founded in the year 33 by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It has not changed since that time. Our church now is 1959 years old. I love that. <laughs> And in the far corner, we have pictures of some of the priests that we've had through the years. And it's not complete in detail because some of the early ones we had no pictures of. But we have Father Stiacic and the Popadia, Father Vladimir Mervichin, Reverend Sakulovic, Father Shukletovic, Vladimir Patakovic, and Father Radanovic, who uh, not only married us, but he baptized our child. So, uh, and then we're also proud of Tommy Kozic, who is a uh, part of the clergy now. And here in the corner, we have Father Peter as a bishop, Bishop Longin, the patriarch, and a Gary born bishop that went to Frabel School as a youngster that wound up being a bishop in, the, in Serbia. And his story is remarkable and tragic and should be told. On the table, there are a few artifacts here that my wife put together. Patron Saint, Saint Sava, the Patriarch. And this was in the North Hall after the fire. We conducted services there. There's a uh, cornerstone from the old church here. I was very fortunate to obtain these two pictures because there are pictures of the 1930s of two different colas that the ladies had. Eventually they all got together and they made it one cola, which is for the best. Uh, some of these artifacts here we picked up in our trip to Europe in uh, 1974. And uh, some of the stories here tells about the uh, laying of the cornerstone for St. Sava. And that was, uh, it's dated on the paper, 1929. So that's when that started to go up. Uh, this is uh, just one of the copies of Serb Rule magazine. And for me, it opened up a whole new world because uh, Mary Hart, the editor, asked me to start doing a thing on music. So I've written about a, a lot of orchestras, a lot of individuals. Joanne Milivojevic wrote three wonderful books on different sections of Serbia and they're they're really great reading for youngsters they can learn a whole lot about their ancestry and uh, I hope they'll partake in that because you have to know from whence you came and it's very important that you know your family roots uh, here later in life I have many people calling me and they want to know do you know anything about my parents where they might have come from, you know. Well, a lot of times I do know, but uh, you know, eventually if they don't get a hold of some older people and find out, 
Then I tell them how to get on the internet and, and check it up on the, on the web pages there. I, I did that for my father and I found out that he came here three times before he decided to settle. His first trip abroad, he went to Italy and he, uh, he, he wound up in Milan, Italy. So you know how I got my name. He named me after that city. And uh, growing up, he was always listening to the opera on Saturdays. And I thought, I really thought there was something wrong with my dad, you know, listening to that screeching, you know. Eventually, he hooked me. And after he passed away, I asked my mom, I says, did he know what he was listening to? Did he like that stuff? And she says, his first job in Milan, Italy, was as a laborer working at the La Scala Opera House. I said, oh, two and two make four. We're also tickled about this. This was on the uh, north gate as you're coming into the church. One of the things that my co-workers on the fire de department presented me with as a token of remembering my church. With this Serb Fest, and I believe this is probably the first attempt to have a mini museum, we've had so many people come through here and they were just very happy to see this. And for me, my most fondest wish would be that we don't neglect this and house this somewhere and even add on more things to it. I'm hoping that on the uh, north wing of the church, that it could be suitable for a museum of sorts. And uh, since we put all this out, people have been coming in here wanting to donate things, you know, to, to make it even better. And my daughter told me today she's willing to work on a grant so that we could get a grant to really make this thing blossom. And for the youngsters, it's very important that they know their heritage from where they came and what our early immigrants went, to, went through to, uh, to come to this point. I'd like to introduce you to my wife, the woman behind the man who took this lump of coal and made a diamond out of it. <laughs> Your favorite wife. And uh, my lovely daughter here, who, are we, who we are so proud of, I met my wife at a picnic that I was playing four years ago. She came in with a schoolmate of mine. Now, mind you, I, I had my eye on this lady for a long time. She was a cheerleader at Horseman High School, and I thought she was pretty special. So when this Serbian friend of ours brought her to the picnic, I says, man, it, it can't be. So uh, I don't know where I got the nerve. I asked her out, and from that point on, our, We've been a twosome. our courtship progressed and progressed. And uh, I think it was two years later we were married. Well, I think you should tell them that our courtship was you would play at a picnic and take the money that you earned, and you would take me to Club Cello to hear more Tambodista <laughs> music. No. And that's got to be love. That has to be love. <laughs> and our house is not quite this cluttered, but pretty close to it. I've got tumbledus under the beds, on the walls, in the shop, in the garage, and most people our age are downsizing, not or upsizing, <laughs> we keep building on rooms. <laughs> our daughter has been a big help to us. She's been a big supporter. When I got that award in Washington, two, what, two years ago, mm -hmm. she was there for me. And um, every award she, you got. She, yeah, every award I got, but uh, that was special. And she's kind of a, a uh, liberated woman of, the, of this century. This and, and uh, you know, she's a tough gal. It's a good thing I didn't look at her <laughs> in Washington because she, she kind of lost it. And had I, had I seen her crying, boy, I would have lost it too. I lost it last night because I think of, of, of the three of us, I'm having the hardest time with this because this is, my father's music has always been a, the fabric of our family life and every event uh, has been punctuated by Tamborisa music. And I'm a little shocked by all of this. She's a little freaked out that I'm quitting. <laughs> that too shall pass. <laughs> But you're only quitting one phase of your life. Well, right. I'm you still. You are so busy that you have to start slowing down. I can't you handle can't it all, so I have involved. something has to go. This is, it. This is a man whom I, I don't think has been bored a day in his life. He's taught me a lot about passion.
passion for what you do and your passion for commitments and values and all those sorts of things. So I can appreciate that, but I can't imagine any event without Tamborita music. Well, I'm very proud of Milan. He is very, very proud of his roots, his culture, his heritage, his parents, his people, and he loves sharing it. And we have been involved in so many things with the traditional arts of Indiana, with other organizations, with the Northwest Visitor Center. They ask us to display and come and talk about this. He gets presentations, and it makes us feel good that we can share others with others all that we are so proud of. And um, it's, it's been a lot of, lot of wonderful experiences. We've met wonderful people. We've never made a lot of money, but we are richer by far than many of those who have because of what has happened to us in our lifetime, only because we're proud of who we are. This uh, mini museum is not the work of just one or two people. We have these dedicated folks here who I'd like to introduce you to, who are very instrumental in many of the artifacts that we have here. And uh, we, go, we go pretty far back in knowing each other. Uh, I'll introduce Ted Ersick first. Ted is a former church president. He's an author, and he's a, a wonderful person to have on your side. And uh, he also happens to be a cousin of my wife's. That helps. I, th I thought I should mention that. And then uh, Ted did some, did some wonderful things here on the uh, uh, fellows that went to fight for Serbia in World War I. And his book is really an enlightening thing that every household should have. And then uh, we have the lovely Zania and Paul Jankarik. I was fortunate enough to play for their wedding. Anyway, they were very instrumental in all this and very cooperative and had a lot of great ideas. And I'm kind of hoping that between the three, four, five of us, we can keep this thing going. And hopefully my, wife, my daughter can get that uh, grant going so we could get some money to house this thing somewhere, preferably in our church. Hopefully. And, uh, you couldn't deal with better people than they're standing right here. Uh, I'll, I'll cherish working with them for the rest of my life. I'd like to say that uh, we have had a wonderful time putting this together. It has been a lot of work, but we are all, all thrilled that the interest is there and that so many people have come in and been overcome with emotion when they look back at some of the things we have collected and displayed for them. So uh, Paul was instrumental in the good history of the church choirs and some really pertinent information. Ted has come up with a lot about the patriot, uh, patriotic sense, and all of us together have just gotten so enthused about this project. We hope we can do something like this together again. Thanks, guys. If you ever have a project, our I'd love to work with you because you are really workers Let's and you can it. count Let's on Let's do it us. some more. That's yeah. right. <laughs>